Hey folks, today I'm going to be talking about how to get started with games development in Linux. And I'm using an Arch-based uh, Manjaro distribution here, and we're going to be using the SFML library for our multimedia needs. So on Linux, SFML recommends that uh, we get the SFML library from our distribution itself. In our case, I am on a Manjaro Arch-based distribution, so I can actually just install it from the Arch AUR, the public user repository. And we can do it with this yay-s SFML. And after you run that, your include files will show up inside user include SFML. And your library files will show up under user lib, lib, lib SFML. So you can see that they are they exist in our system right now, and we can use them. Okay. We're going to start with a clean slate of a C++ program, so we have a simple Hello World program, and if you've seen my previous C++ development videos, um, I'll be using some of those Vim plugins to generate and build this file. So I have a CMake simple CMake lists file, which just sets the C++ standard to be 17, and creates an executable with main.cpp. And I can build it, and I can then run it. Hello. And that works perfectly fine for command line programs. So how do we go from here to starting to use SFML? In order to use SFML, we need to include the SFML include directory. And that's relatively straightforward. We can do target include directories. And we can say hello. And then we can say slash user include SFML. And that works. Then we need to tell it the compiler where to find the SFML libraries as well. And you can see that SFML is split up into five different libraries for system, window, graphics, network, and audio. Um, so all we have to do is target underscore link underscore libraries. Do hello, SFML dash system, SFML dash window, and SFML dash graphics. So these are basic libraries. And what we can do then is SFML has this sample code that we can just, let's just copy and paste and see what happens. So I open my main file, I just copy paste it, and let's generate the CMake file, let's build it. And you can see that after building it, our uh, COC also figured out that this was valid code and let's run it. What happens if we do debug hello now? Brilliant. So it runs the program. There is a problem though that it runs it in full screen or however I se I've set up my tiling window manager to run it. So let's fix that. So for video games usually we don't want it to tile so we want it to float. Um, so we can set that by basically you can take a look at the title of this. In, th in this case this is SFML works. So I can take a look at that title and I can use that title in my i3 config file and exclude it. SFML works. I think that was the, yep, nope, the W is not capital, okay. And I can refresh my i3 config and then if I now run debug hello, you can see that it shows up as a floating window that's borderless. Um, let's add a border here so we can actually um, interact with it as well. And in order to introduce a border that we can move around with, all we have to do is in our i3 config file we have to say border normal. Now this won't work as is because I do have a four underscore window here down here that sets border pixel to zero for every window. Um, so this needs to be this needs to go after that. All right, so. We can add it here, and this time if we refresh our i3 config file, run it, you can see that there is a border that I can pick up and drag along, and it works perfectly fine. I've also turned on my compositor so I can see which window has focus, because when we have floating windows, it's, it's a bit more important than when we just had tying windows. So you can see when this has focus, uh, other windows become tra partially transparent, and it's clear when I have the focus on the game window. 
and the transparency is enabled by my Compton config. So in Compton config, uh, you can see that there is the inactive opacity is set to be 80%. Let's get back to the game though. So let's open our main.cpv file and let's take a look at what's happening here. So we have a render window, which is the window for the game itself, and it has a width and height of 200 pixels, and the title is SFML Works. Inside that, we create a circle um, shape with a radius of 100. So the diameter of it will actually be the window width and height. Um, we fill the color um, and then we enter into this while loop where as long as the window is open we pull for an event if the event is of type close and this is where we'd add events like if a key is pressed or something like that we clear the window we redraw the frame we display the frame and then it keeps looping until there is an exit event in which case we call window.close which automatically closes the program so Let's change it up a bit. Let's change our width and height to be 640, 480. Um, let's make the circle smaller. Let's. So I'm going to start with just fixing the indentation here a bit, so it's a lot smaller. Um, and I, I really prefer the cursor on the same line. The opening. I really prefer the opening braces on the same line. All right. So now we have a shape, and let's say we want to move around when we press the arrow keys. Right. So as is as is this is just a static red circle we take a look at the handling um, keyboard mouse and joysticks in the windows module to understand how to actually move stuff around and it's as simple as checking if the keyboard if a key is pressed and to move the character in a certain direction so all we have to do is in here we can actually just do if sf keyboard is key pressed is key pressed sf keyboard left let's say and if the key is pressed we can do shape dot move and the offset on x along the x-axis or the y-axis the y-axis actually increments downwards and the x-axis increments to the right like in mathematics so the top left position is the 0, 0, and the bottom right is the, in our case for our window, it'll be at 640 width and 480 height. So if we want to move it left, we have to decrement the x position. So let's say minus 10, 0, and let's do the same thing for the other keys as well. Right, down, up. Um, when we're moving right, we just want to increment the x-axis. When we're moving down, we want to increment the y-axis. And when we're moving up, we want to decrement the x-y-axis. Let's see what happens if we build this and run it. So now, if we press the keys for down, right, up, and left, it works perfectly fine. And you can sort of see the beginnings of a um, of a video game from just simple movement of a of a sprite on, of a shape on the screen. In future videos, I want to show an entity component system that we can set up, so we can understand how more complex games are set up and built from the ground up. So it's not just people adding a bunch of events here and adding a bunch of logic in a single file. And if you guys prefer, I instead of a tutorial format, I do more of a devlog format where I build a game and um, just showcase the highlights. Um, let me know as well. I, I think I can do that as well. Thank you guys.